Amen. You may be seated, please. Does anybody know what chat, where, where, where we're returning this morning? Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Yeah, it's already up there, so... Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's getting into your heart and your mind, and and uh, I, I'm praying that you're finding yourself wonderfully discovering the Holy Spirit, bringing it to your mind in situations um, in life as we uh, as we need the Word of God, Amen. Right there, available um, to the Spirit to us uh, for use in this battle. So Ephesians six ten to twenty. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, and with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Oh, let's obey that right now. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we pray. We pray that you will give words to make known the mystery of your gospel. We pray for fearlessness. Open our mouths, our hearts, and minds to boldly proclaim and to live out your word. In this battle that we are in, we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. In addition to all this, let's start there. In addition to all what? Well, what we've covered so far in the series. And if you've missed any part of it, I invite you to go to our YouTube channel, First Reformed Church of Decatur, uh, where you can look at the videos of um, this series. But let me give you a quick review. We first started looking at the fact that our struggle is not against what? Flesh and blood. So our struggle is not against the visible physical stuff that you see. Our actual struggle is against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Behind the visible physical, behind the visible physical, there is an invisible spiritual root. Okay? And so we looked at that first. And we need our armor on. We cannot fight this fight in our own strength, in our own preparation. We need God to clothe us in His armor and empower us for the battle. So we need to pray. pray is the, prayer is the primary way that we put on each piece of the armor. We get into the presence of God, which we can do in Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're invited to boldly approach the throne through Christ in His name and ask for the armor. Ask for his marching orders and his empowerment in our struggle. We looked at the first piece of the armor, belt of truth. Truth is what God says about a situation. Right? And his truth is what sets us free. Okay? So we looked at the belt of truth. We looked at the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness meaning right standing in the presence of God, right before Him. We are declared righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. Praise God, because we are not righteous in ourselves. Amen? We are all sinners. But Jesus, through what He did on the cross, He gives us His righteousness when we put our faith in Him. Yet the enemy, Satan, tries to get us to go down unrighteous paths, the wrong paths. 
so that we open up the door for his evil and his demons to, 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 to have more influence in our lives. So that we can do damage to ourselves and to others. But when we walk the straight and narrow, so what do we do? The Holy Spirit convicts us of where we're wrong. We repent. We ask for forgiveness, cleansing. That the Lord would take away every claim the enemy has in our lives. He sets us aright on the straight and narrow, and He gives us the strength. He won't let us be tempted beyond what we can bear, but with the temptation, we'll provide a way to, out of it so we can stand up. Amen? Amen. All right. The breastplate of righteousness. We looked at last week the feet fitted with the gospel of peace. Whose peace? God's peace. Right? Jesus is God. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give it. Peace is not out here. <laughs> Peace is right here. Through faith in Jesus Christ, He comes in and He lives in here. You've got to go inward into the Spirit. You've got to align your soul with the Spirit of Christ, what the Spirit is saying. And when you're in agreement with the Spirit, peace comes through. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, so today we come to verse 16. In addition to all of that, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. First, in addition to all of this, there's a lot that Paul has given us. But here's another key. Take up the shield of faith. First, notice the verb has changed. All right? It went from having in place to now taking up. So the first three, we're supposed to simply have Always be clothed in the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, your feet always are to be clothed, all right, and ready to go for the battle. But now we get to take up. This means that, that these are the next three pieces of the armor are things that, that you take up when the situation warrants, okay? And notice that you take it up. It's your responsibility. He's saying, you, take this up. All right? And, and for the battle. All right. The reason why this piece, the shield of faith, is so critical is that it covers all of you if you are behind it properly. That's about the right de depiction of the shield from, from Paul's day. And, and it was big enough that when you took it up, you could fully be protected. All right, from the flaming arrows um, from, that are being launched your way. All right. So he says, in addition to all these, take up the shield of faith. When do we take it up? Well, earlier Paul said, when the day of evil comes. All right. When all hell is loosed out on you. All right. You know when the enemy's attacking you from every, every direction. All right. Take up the shield of faith for those times. What is faith? And how is it a shield? The first thing I want you to notice is the posture when you take up the shield. All right? You are standing behind it. You're holding your ground. Or you're even advancing forward. You do not take up a shield in order to run. Amen? Okay? It doesn't do you any good. <laughs> you know, that way. You know, it takes no faith to run from the battle. It takes faith to hold your ground and even advance when the enemy is trying to knock you down with his arrows. So the question I want to ask is, what ground is God convicting you you need to hold? What ground is God convicting you you need to take in His name. For that, you're going to need the, need the shield of faith. Real faith 
is expressed, is confirmed by action. Holding or advancing the kingdom ground. It takes... Because faith without action is, is not real faith. Amen? That's what James chapter 2, verse 20 says. It takes no faith to cut and to hold the ground or advance the kingdom ground, the ground that the Lord is calling you to advance. You know, it's, it is, notice the shield of faith follows the shoes of peace. That's fitting because we're talking about holding this ground or moving it. It's tied to your feet. You know, faith is not a feeling. It is not something that you have to try to conjure up. All right, oh, do I have enough faith? No, no, faith is taking action on the belief you have. I love the definition that um, Tony Evans gives. Biblical faith is acting like it is so, even when it is not so, in order that it might be so, solely because God says so. <laughs> <laughs> Try to memorize that one. <laughs> Biblical faith is acting like it is so, even when it is not so, in order that it might be so, solely because God said so. Faith is belief acted upon. It's tied to your feet. The greatest chapter on faith in the New Testament, people would arguably say, is Hebrews chapter 11, right? And in Hebrews 11, what do you got? You got all the heroes of the faith listed. And each one of them, you give, they, he gives their name, David, Abel, Enoch, so Abraham, Noah. And then it tells you, so it gives you the name of the person, and then what the person did, the action taken, that showed they had faith in God. So faith is an action, not Merely a feeling. For example, let's look at verse 7 of Hebrews 11. By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. Noah took action. He set his feet to doing what God said to do. He acted like it was so, even when it was not so. Surely, you know, there was no rain coming yet. Right? It took a long time to build that ark. In order that it might be so that he and his family would be protected as God said they would. And he did it in the face of the mockery of the onlookers solely because God said so. <laughs> Why are you building this ark? God told me to. He told me to. He told me to. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Another example. Let's look at Hebrews 11. Verse 8, Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the, in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. He acted like it was so, even when it was not so, in order that it might be so, solely because God said so. Faith is tied to your feet. It's tied to action. You know, don't, you don't ever have to ask yourself, do I have enough faith? All you have to do is look at your feet. Okay? <laughs> to know, is your, faith, is your feet doing <laughs> what God's calling you to do? Then yes, you have faith. <laughs> okay? That you just look at your feet. The footsteps reveal the movement. That's why in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, with an NRSV translation, you walk by faith. It's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. You always know you have faith by checking your feet. Now I want to apply this to several aspects or areas of faith. Let's talk about the area of salvation. Faith, self, saving faith. What is it? Well, I want to get at it this way. There's a lady who is in a high-rise building. And, and she's on the sixth floor. The building's on fire. She checks every stairwell, fire, can't, can't go. She, she checks the elevator, not working. She goes to the end of the hallway, opens up the window. She looks out, and there are firefighters who have this tarp and a big target. And they're calling up to her, jump! 
Now, she has practically a PhD in the fact that the firefighters are going to catch her because her husband's one. All right? She saw him train. She, saw, she, she knows what they do. She, she knows they practice. So she knows that if she jumps, they will catch her. Does that knowledge save her? No. It sure doesn't. Because she looks out the window and she can't make her feet do it. Another person comes running up the hallway, looks out the window, knows nothing about, doesn't know, doesn't know the names of the firefighters, never saw them train. They say, jump, jumps. He's saved. Right? She's not. Saving faith isn't knowledge. The, the demons believe and shudder in fear. It's not what you know. It's do you know it enough in a way that you jump into the arms of Jesus? They, you're depending on him. You're not trying to crawl down those th stories yourself. Right? You jump into the arms of Jesus. You trust that what he did on the cross was for you. You believe it. You depend on it. You bow the knee. You ask him to forgive you, to, to be your Lord for all who believe and, and profess are saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10. So that's saving faith. Let's look at the faith you need to hold down the ground that God has given you. Okay? A different kind of aspect of faith. So here I'm primarily thinking about the truths the, the biblical truths, that's the ground that God gives us to, to stand on and to, and to hold, all right? We, we know that, that faith is acting like God is telling the truth, that he isn't stuttering. So, so Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is ground that a Christian must hold. Amen? But it's surely not popular in this world. You know, you, you go into a public space and, and you start talking about what you believe and, you find, and, they find, and people find out that you believe that unless a person has Jesus, they are not saved. They're going to spend eternity separate from Him because no one comes to the Father except through Christ. You're going to have arrows thrown at you. You're going to have darts come against you. People are going to say, how arrogant is that? How dare you believe? Can you really would tell a Muslim that they need Jesus instead of Allah? You would, actually, you would tell a, a Jewish person that they need Jesus in order to be saved? You would tell a, a Hindu, you, how, you, you really believe there's only one way? Oh, you're going to have arrows launched at you. You're going to need, need the shield of faith. You're going to need to know what it means to, to hold that ground and to do it in the right spirit as well. Gentle, right? As it says in Timothy, with gentleness and respect. But yet to hold this ground, better to advance this ground, because the person you're talking to needs Jesus in order to have life eternal and life, period. Amen? Truth claims. Here's a little bit of help. Jesus said in Mark 8, 38, If anyone is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when He comes in His Father's glory and with the holy angels. It takes no faith to when you realize you do not have the popular opinion you do not have, you have God's opinion. It takes no faith to stay silent. All right? It takes no faith to just let everybody believe what they want to believe. Uh, especially in family. There was a situation at, a, at, a, uh, at a, uh, 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 the reception of a wedding. This is family. And we're sitting at a table, and I'm talking to an astronomer. Now, this is 
albeit distant family, but family. <laughs> and, and the astronomer doesn't believe in God. And, is that, and we get talking, gets wind that, I mean, I, I revealed, I believe in Jesus, and Jesus is the only way. You really believe that? Yes, I do. So, then he says to me, you've got a lot of work to do. I said, you're right. <laughs> you're right. If I really believe this truth, then I've got a lot of work to do because there's a lot of people who don't have Jesus and do not have life in Him. And if I believe it, then I'm going to want to hold that ground and advance that ground in people's lives. Amen? Amen. Anyone else agree that the world's coming against the truths of the Bible? God's truth and His Word? Just let people know that you believe that the world was created in six days, around 6,000 years ago. Just tell people that. I invite you into a conversation about that. God's taken me on a journey about that because there was a time I was the one launching arrows at people for believing that. And I was a Christian. But I was launching arrows at my brother-in-law on this issue. <laughs> okay, because he was a young earth and I was an old earth believer. And he stood his ground. And when he stood his ground in the right spirit, I opened my eyes at the, situ at the issue again. I'm now believing that this world was created in six days about 6,000 years ago. And now I'm finding the arrows thrown at me when I bring that up. And you're going to need the shield of faith to hold your ground. Just try to tell people that, um, that you believe that... Um, I'm all over the place, Mark. Sorry about that. Um, tell people that you, that you believe that sin is sin. That there's sin. You know, tell people that, that you believe that, um, that what the Bible calls sin is sin. Okay? All of it. Same-sex sex is a sin. Sex out of marriage is a sin. Gossiping about people is a sin. Hatred is a sin. Uh, telling something that's not the truth is a sin. Um, coveting is a sin. Jealousy is a sin. You tell people. You believe that what the Bible says is sin is a sin. Tell them that you believe that you're a fellow sinner. Amen. And that you're only saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, so, so tell people that. I'm telling you, you're going to get out in the world. You're going to get arrows launched at you. And it's going to be hard to hold your ground when you're, you're being accused of being a hater. How dare you t say that that's sin? How dare you point it out? How dare you suggest somebody needs to repent of that and, and get right with Christ on that? Tell people that you believe that life begins at conception. Tell them that you believe that God is the one who knits us together in our mother's wombs. Tell people that. You're going to have arrows. You mean God gets to tell us what we ought to be doing and not doing? Yeah. Yep. Yep. You mean this body is not my own? No, it's not your own. Nope, it belongs to God. We belong to God. It's going to take faith, the shield of faith, to hold that ground and advance that ground. Oh, I'm glad, my, my, I'm glad that faith is not tied to feelings. Because, you know, for example, Jesus says, you have a problem with somebody, go to them directly yourself, one-on-one, -on -one, Matthew 18, right? I'm telling you, my feelings say, uh-uh, uh-uh. I want to avoid that situation. I, I want to cut and run. I, I, I want to go talk to somebody else, somebody who I think will agree with me. I, I, I want to get good counsel before I go talk to that person directly on, on my own. Before I know it, I'm gossiping. I'm just getting a whole bunch of people in my camp against that other person. Glad it's not tied to feelings, because feelings, man, they tell me to do the wrong thing too often. 
Amen? No. Faith is obeying God's truth in the situation. Here's, here's an example I love. Um, it's from Luke chapter 5. Um, Jesus uh, sees Peter and his group out there fishing. They, and uh, he says, uh, caught anything? No. Why don't you throw your net on the other side? And Peter says, uh, Jesus, let me help you out. You stick to preaching, I'll stick to the fishing, okay? I mean, I grew up a fisherman. I know I have a lot of experience. This is my business. And uh, besides which, I've been out here all night. The fish aren't biting. It's not going to make any difference if I throw the net on the other side. So, so Peter was not feeling very faithful, was he, concerning what Jesus was saying. He was thinking, you know, that doesn't make any sense what you're saying, Jesus. But, Peter says in that passage, because you say so, <laughs> at your word, I'll just do it. So even though he wasn't feeling full of faith, he showed faith. He did what Jesus told him to do. And you know the story. The next, we're starting to break. They had such a huge haul of fish. The boat started to sink. Peter discovered what hopefully we all have discovered. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter how you're feeling about it. It doesn't matter if it makes sense to you or to others. When you do what God tells you to do, you discover that He is God, and we are not. Amen? After that, at the end of that, Peter says, My Lord and my God. <laughs> That's faith. Oh, it takes faith to please God. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, you cannot please God. You know, so often... God gives a command and He just kind of watches to see what we're going to do. Uh, you know, we think we're waiting on God. Sometimes God's waiting on us. He's already told us what to do. <laughs> right? And we're waiting for some feeling to come along. Just obey what He's telling you to do. Again, biblical faith is acting like it is so even when it is not so in order that it might be so solely because God said so. A couple examples. Joshua. God tells Joshua, tell the priest to lead the way and when, this, when they step into the water, then I'll dam up the water. What was God doing? He's setting up a situation. He's like, are you guys going to walk by faith this time and obey me as you take the land? Not believing your eyes, but believing my word. So the, so the priest had to, the water was flowing. I heard people t who studied this and studied where it would probably happen. The water, it's flowing. It's dangerous. Okay? And it's deep. And so they're like, they're walking right up to the water and they're like, God's going to dam this up? Yeah. And God said, when you step into it is when he'll do it. This time they did. <laughs> the water dams up. Boom. There's another example. Joshua, march around that city of Jericho one time every single day. And on the seventh day, seven times. What? I think sometimes God tells you to do something that just is absolutely crazy in your mind and in other people's minds just to see, do you walk by faith in Him or in yourself and what others think? They did. You know the story. The walls came down. Peter sees Jesus walking out on the water. He gets excited. Call me out on the water. He's got belief. Jesus says... Come on out. And he does. That's faith. But he starts to let go of the faith when he starts looking, takes his eyes off of Jesus and sees the wind and the waves, starts to doubt. But 
As he sinks, he cries out. That's faith again. Call on to me. Amen? And Jesus nabs him up and puts him in the boat. And just one more story, and then we'll close. It was the 1996 Olympics. Her name was Carrie Struggs. She was a gymnast. A little tiny girl. Who, anybody remember the 1996 Olympics of Carrie Struggs? Yeah, okay, it's a few of us, though. It's a few of us people. All right, well, at any rate, she, uh, she is going up for the vault. All right? Now, we're in second place. The U.S. team is in second place, and it's all on her. Okay? Now, this is her event. Okay? And so there's a lot of hope, but it's all hanging on her. She runs, hits the spring, pounces on the vault. Thank you. <laughs> Peter was a gymnast. I was looking for him to say one. Anyway, and thank you. And he, she pounces on the vault. She twists, she turns, she comes down. Oh, and she has hurt her leg. Something fierce. She, she's like this, and she's crying, and the score's not high enough to bring us into first place. And, and the coach isn't allowed to go out there. And, and, but he gets her attention, and he says, You can do this, Carrie. And she's, she's limping. She's got another time to go, okay, another try. And, and he says, Keep your eyes on me. Carrie, don't look down at your leg. <laughs> you're just going to see defeat. <laughs> I know you're hurting. Keep your eyes on me, Carrie. Right here. I know you can do this. She, she, she limps to, to the end of the run, the track, whatever, vault track. And she lines up. And you're thinking, this is impossible. She runs. She hits that spring. She hits the vault. She flips. She sticks it. And immediately brings the leg up. They carried her out on a stretcher. First place. <laughs> First place. Why? How? Because there was somebody in the corner who said, don't look at your situation. Don't look at your circumstance. I know you're hurting. Keep your eyes on me. The author of Hebrews would say it this way, Hebrews 12, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Don't look at your situation. Don't look at what the world's saying. I know it's hard. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He'll give you the strength to hold your ground. Your faith is in Him. The shield of faith. We could talk about this for another hour, but what you really need to know so you got to do it. Trusting Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Oh, Lord. Where we have not walked by faith, forgive us. We now turn our eyes on you. It is you who will empower us to hold the ground you give us to hold. To advance the ground, the kingdom ground for you. Where you command us to go. We depend on you. The author and perfecter of our faith. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.